What's going on, Cruise Control? Thanks for riding with me. We're not gonna waste any time. Let's go ahead and get right into this video. Well, good day, Mike. How are you? Look at this thing. Oh my goodness. Cruisers. This, first and foremost, let's introduce you to the man of the hour here, Mike Campbell. Yeah. Always a yeah. pleasure to see Thanks. you, sir. Thanks for coming out. Cruisers, before we get into it, you gotta take a peek at what this man is building. A beautiful 1934 Ford sedan with a couple, I guess we can say a couple little changes, changes Mike. Yeah. Cruise, 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 cruise. original 34 Ford four-door sedan. Now, a lot of you might remember that actually Bonnie and Clyde, that's what they got killed in, was a 34 Ford four-door sedan, which would look similar to this, except it was all riddled full of holes. This is where it gets case. interesting, yeah. cruisers. This, if anybody has been wondering how much work actually goes into building a hot rod, street rod, this is gonna show you exactly kinda what goes into that. Like there's steps, there's layers, absolutely so much work goes into building something of this caliber so it started out as a basically a western canada field car so i just got a body and four doors and two front fenders is all i got when i first uh, got the vehicle no frame or any of the little bits and pieces but the nice thing about the bits and pieces is they can be bought you know they're all reproduction now so all the headlights tail lights handles all that stuff's new you can repro they reproduce it now so Mike, this thing is absolutely incredible. I know you've got so much work done, done to this thing. It started its life, we'll say, as a 34 foot sedan four door, right? Right, yeah. So just, if you don't mind, take me take me on a tour around this sure. creation of yours that sure. you got going on. So yep. um, we took a peek at what an original 34 Ford sedan would look like, but this thing looks shorter for some reason to me, I think. Tell me about yeah. what you've done there. Anyway, yeah. it looks shorter to me, and we'll, we'll and leave it there. And to give you an idea, wow. this section here, look at this cruiser. So it's been 17 inches removed, and then as we may be remembering that picture, with the quarter window would be here, and the back of the body actually comes out and then comes back this kind of a profile here. I had to cut that back section out. This piece here is original. This piece here is 1937 Ford. This piece here is from a 1935 Ford slant back. So I did cheat a little bit. A lot of guys have had to do a lot of metal fabricating where I've done some, but not as much because I was able to get this panel. Jeez. And this Cruises. panel here is 37 Ford. Cruises, come and take a peek. Mike, all the cut lines here, like he was saying, 17 inches, you said, yeah. taken out of the length of the roof of this thing. So we're talking about this much of the car has been removed. And then Mike has done all of this work to it. Now the 37 back section here would have normally had a bigger rear window and it was a, what they call a split window. So they would have had metal that went down here and I didn't like the shape of it and I wanted it to still look like a 34 Ford. So I cut that out and if you look, you can actually see where the weld has been done. I regrafted the 34 Ford window back in. So now from the back, people can see that it looks like a 34, not a 37 Ford. But to finish the car to the point where it'll actually be painted, I think I'm probably about 2,000 hours away, believe it or not. To, to wow. It's about a, a 3,000 hour type of a project. But I'm in about a couple of years now, just off and on. Sure. Because I've had sure. other projects, you know. But Yeah, well, I was looking at this thing here behind us on the hoist. And uh, cruisers, I don't know if you want to span over and take a peek at this. Mike, I don't know, brief, I know we're on this 34 Ford here, but what are we looking at? That's a 1927 Model T Ford Coupe. 
It model. started out as a field car. To be honest, that car was in worse shape than this 34. So if you look at what this looks like now, that one going in was worse. That was an $800 field car from Western Canada as well. But just a shell, that's what we started with. That's it, and yeah. that's what we do, cruisers. That's, we bring these things to life better than factory, and I bet you're gonna have way more fun in something like that. Yeah, you, you do. would have back in the original days. Yeah, you get a lot of attention. All right, cruisers, so this, again, we're gonna show you what the car originally would have looked like, and go ahead and look at what we're looking at now. Absolutely phenomenal. 17 inches, roughly, removed to make the body where we are today. And again, the whole back window, gone. All right, cruisers, we're gonna check out, Mike was telling me off camera before we, uh, we came here, there's a couple little neat little tricks that you would never guess about this. Obviously with the gas, check this out. How modern is that? Love it. But how much work went into that? All right, let's shut that. And we're gonna check out what we all love, the interior. However, work in progress, we shall say. Let's go ahead, cruisers. Look at that. There is so much work, so many pieces gone into this right here. The, the whole frame of the window, Mike, you could probably explain it a lot better. I love how we have some markings so we can at least see a little bit of the work that you've done. Uh, some people can appreciate it, but just tell us what's all gone into this here. Okay, normally the, this rear door, if we go back to where those pictures were taken, or the original one, that would be square. Okay, so yep. when everything was moved ahead, I had to recontour the, the whole top of this door and the interior window frame. There's seven cuts just in this inner window frame to try and get it to that shape. Wow. And the same as the inner, I think there's three or four different pieces that I had to do on the, the English wheel and the roller to get them to, to get that shape. So about seven pieces just yeah. in this cuts. alone. Five cuts, yeah. Cuts, where are they? <laughs> you do some pretty good work there, Mike. Oh Once you finish goodness. it with body filler, hopefully you won't see any of it, but you can do see the definition of it at the wow. moment. Wow, wow. This is just unbelievable. The amount of work looks like you got the new bear claw. Um, yeah, a lot of guys do this. You know, it's a safety type of thing where they, uh, they have a safety you know, double latch where the original, the original ones are like a dovetail thing and they tend, if you go yeah. over a bump, they could pop. And the reason they call it a suicide door is that the door pops and you grab onto it, it's like a kite. You don't go out with the, with the door. It's sucking you out. Yeah, you're gone. You can't, if you're going five miles an hour, you aren't holding onto the door. It'll, it just opens up and you're going with it. That is it. Um, that's how they got that reputation of suicide doors. So it's a bit of a slammer. You can take out the front one, right? Let's open it up here. Look at, look at how that sounds too late. My goodness. Beautiful, Mike. A little bit of fabricating here. This is original, this piece here. And then from there down, it had to make these and then some rod. And so you can get the outside door handle working as well as the inside door handle. And there again, when they latch in, they got like a pin and that's oh. in the unlatch. Yep. And there's a safety. So if it say if it went on the first click, that's a safety and that's a lock. So even if it popped once, it would not go right open. Okay, so pin obviously would come out through here into the door. Nice little safety feature there, yep. which obviously you don't get the kite factor. That's right. Uh, there we go. And it looks like you uh, have a nice big sunroof in the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, it. that's the next metal work that project. Is is it. We're going to fill the roof. They call it filling the roof. You are going to fill it. There's nice. a panel that gets welded in. It makes it quite a bit. It tightens the car up quite a bit sure. to do that. Now talking about you know, tightening the car up, stiffening it up. So let's talk about underneath a little bit, right? Underneath this. Sure, I think you were saying it's a four-wheel disc independent suspension, I believe. Yep, it's uh, taken from a 2007 Pontiac Solstice, the whole drive line. Wow. So basically, even though it's a 34 Ford, it sinks, it's a 2007 
2007 Pontiac Solstice because the engine is a 2.4 liter inline four, automatic transmission, the independent rear end, and an independent front end with disc brakes all around. So it should handle sort of like a newer style car, that's the idea, and they call it a resto rod because it's a hot rod, but it looks like it's restored on the outside. It hasn't changed much. Since all right, so here we are, cruisers. We've got the interior. We're missing some seats where, I was telling Mike off camera, we're gonna get some lawn chairs in here, fire it up, and uh, go for a nice little test drive, see how the engine is running in this thing, but Mike didn't laugh, so <laughs> I guess we will not do that today, cruisers. Another time, um, but Mike, Let's get back to business and tell me about this. It looks like, uh, you know, it's an original, I guess, dash that you've got in here, um, but the clusters, the um, the gauges, all that does not look factory, obviously, and the wood grain, phenomenally done. Tell me a little bit about what we're looking at here. So I started out with an original 34 Ford dash, which wasn't in great shape, so okay. but I kept the top of it, which is the right contour. From here down, this is basically all been fabricated. Wow. I used the instrument panel from that uh, Pontiac Solstice. Okay. And the radio. And the steering column is a 1980s GM band, tilt column. They're pretty simple because you can put the ignition switch in the dash rather than it keeps the column nice and clean. That is awesome. Yeah. So cool. And then the wood graining was a whole process in itself. That's something that... Uh, so you did that? Yeah. You did the yeah. wood grain? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's a steel dash, but it looks like wood. And I guess that's the, the idea is to make it look like it really is wood. And they did do a wood grain dash back in the 30s on a lot of vehicles. Not just Ford, a lot of them had, especially some of the upper end cars, had all wood grain dashes. So, so you truly are a jack of all trades. Well, we try. My we try. Yeah. yeah. I, I would say, so yeah. from the metal fabrication to the... To the to the drive line to the to the to the dash work that you've done on this phenomenal you might notice there's a heater down below there that's out of a 37 ford i was just looking at that check that out cruisers right underneath there from a 37 ford yeah heater man and it works it will do yeah it will work yeah it'll work wow i've tested it um, I'm building this car for, for my wife, actually. I don't know if we mentioned that at the beginning of the... We did not. Nice. Uh, so okay. it's going to be her car, and uh, if we get a cool day in the fall or something, nice to have a little bit of the heat. Yeah. So what are you thinking of doing for the interior? Have you thought of that? Do we not want to give away any no, secrets actually, we, right now? We or? do have... Uh, the interior, believe it or not, with the exception of the headliner and the carpet, the interior is done. Pop this handle on here just to give you an idea of what we're going to do. So here's one of the door panels. It's done in what they call a distressed leather which has a little bit of texture. I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, but it's got a bit of texture to it. It's beautiful. There's an aluminum bezel that I've already made that would go on here. And then this rod, what it does is it's a safety. So once you close the door, this will slide over and this pin will lock into the door jam. And that prevents the thing, even though it's got the good latches, it also prevents it. So there's no way that it's going to pop open. So hey. that's a safety feature. Yeah. Safety first, right? Yeah. And the seats are also done. Wow. All right, cruisers. I'm super excited because the hood was just popped. Come with me and take a peek at the drive line on this thing. Mike, unbelievable how this is all crammed in here. Cruisers, take a peek at this. Wow. Wow, look at this thing. Mike, this doesn't look like a Pontiac Solstice part. That's been uh, changed a little bit. It's what actually the... from a 36 Ford, the original air cleaner. This top piece has been uh, added to it. Uh, I cut some slots and some screening just to kind of change it up and get a little more airflow. Wow. This piece coming down here into the th throttle body is actually a, a piece of three inch diameter exhaust tubing. So. The master, uh, mass airflow sensor is here. It needs that in order to run the motor properly because now it's running on computer. The master cylinder, the booster, the brake pedal assembly, and the gas pedal, which is actually drive-by wire, which is electronic now, oh, wow, okay. is all from that same car. So what I've done is bought a whole car, 2007 Pontiac Solstice, and used just about everything that I could get off of it. And it, it's... It's a lot better way to do it because then you aren't going to nickel and dime yourself to sure. death on bits and pieces. You've yeah. got everything. Even the wiring harness is totally stripped from that car. Wow. And I kept everything. 
and the computer has been reflashed in order to eliminate the bats, which is the vehicle anti-theft system, which need that special key. Now I don't, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And some other things that I won't get into details, but what they call it reflashing the computer. Okay. And, it, and it makes it more of a normal type of a situation rather than something that's, because you got different things. This had OnStar power, you know, when you close the doors, the- Yeah, everything was yeah, electronic, yeah, right? Everything goes so, off or everything geez. goes on and all that kind of stuff. So wow. we've eliminated a lot of that stuff and try and keep it simple is the so idea. So it sounds it. like just so much work, like just has gone into the existing Solstice engine. Like I couldn't imagine how many hours, countless hours has gone into, you know, custom fabricating the exhaust pipe into this and like just unbelievable the amount of work here and craftsmanship that you have. All right, I gotta check this out, cruisers. I'm sorry. This gas tank, Mike. This looks pretty wild. What's going on here? The gas tank originally in these cars would have been at the very back of the yes. car. Yes. And as we videoed earlier, we have a gas filler on the side with the magic little up. secret yeah. door. So that gas tank belongs to that donor car. Okay. So it's already got an electric pump. In, in the tank and it's plastic so it's pretty safe i love being in here too cruisers i wish you were in here with me you can certainly see so many of the cut lines and the work that has been done to the back end here as you can see all the cut lines all in here mike you're a fabulous welder as well i can see your work around the gas tank in here obviously this is early stages still in the interior but you can see the work and you do some fantastic stuff like look at in here cruisers just the attention to detail and when this is finished interiors in the carpets in the the car is painted everything's done to it you're never gonna see that again so get a good look wow Your, hood, your new hood ornament, my friend. I just, it's kicking back there. Yeah, it was over on the shelf. Check yep. this out, cruisers. Tell me a little bit about this. We have to use this. Am I right? It's an accessory piece that they did offer in 1934. Greyhound. It's reproduction now, but they did make them original. You wow. can't find the original ones. And if you did, they'd be so pitted, you probably couldn't afford to chrome plate it because it's expensive to get things chrome Definitely today. Definitely the prices of that. So that'll be kind of the finishing, the finishing okay. touch when that goes on there. There you go. Yep. Courtesy of cruise control. You can thank me. It was it was under a couple things back yep. there, Mike. The Almost. box has some dust on it. I don't know if you yep. forgot about it's it or what. Been around for a couple of years. Yep. There you go. Yep. Well, cruisers, that is going to sum up another video for us. And thanks for riding with us, and we'll catch you on the next one. Cruise, 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 cruise.